Hello, and we're back to Global Voices on Heart Rhythm TV. I'm your host, Juan Carlos Serpa. And yes, we do not get tired of talking about cardioneuroablation. And for that, now I'm joined by my good friend, Dr. Togak Su from the Jedi Periti uh, University from Turkey, Istanbul, and Dr. Jeffrey Winterfield from the MS, MUSC on Southern Carolina. Is that right? That's correct. I get it right. Mm -hmm. So welcome, gentlemen, to the show. Thank you so much. It's Thank nice you. having you both here. It's our pleasure. We just had an amazing session of cardioneuroablation. The room was crowded, a lot of questions, and we do not have enough time to answer all these questions. And what we have learned of cardioneuroablation is the more we study, the more doubts that we're having. I'm going to ask you something, Toga. When, how can we differentiate the indication of the cardioneuroablation for bradyarrhythmia? What's the tips and tricks to make this division on, on the decision, on the indication? Thanks, Juan. I think this is the most important question. I think for Vazovagasinko patient, the indication should be similar with cardiac pacing. Yeah. The patient should be severe and recurrent syncope episodes, and you should try lifestyle modification, education of the patient, and then after you demonstrate dominant cardioimmune response, the main reason of the Vazova syncope, and if you decide to implant a cardiac pacemaker, I think if the patient is younger than 40 years old, you should think about the CNA because we know yeah. that cardiac pacing has no serious effect in this patient population. But how atropine it makes plays a, war, uh, plays a role in all this stuff? Because atropine can make you decide with different ages. Why put a, a, a definition of the 40 years old? Yeah, perfect. Actually, atropine demonstrates what we will see after cardioneurablation yeah. procedure. So I think it's very important. For example, if the patient has Vazovaga syncope episodes, if the patient is younger than 40 years old, but if you didn't see an increase on sinus rate yeah. after the atropine administration, you should think about the structural involvement of sinus node. So you may not try CNA in such a patient, but yeah. in younger population, you will not see such a response too much. Yeah. Jeffrey, we saw the last year of the last HRS in 2022, a late-breaking clinical trial about the experience of the cardiac ablation in the United States. Mm -hmm. Where were in the 2022, and where are we now? That's a great question. Uh, yeah, that, that was an important study presented by Dr. Tung last year, and he mentioned it in his discussion today. Since then, we haven't really moved the ball too much further forward, have we? That yeah. study was interesting in that there were a number of patients who had really had, in a sense, kind of a crossover. They were ablated for something else and cardioneuroablation yeah. was really an adjunct. So I think it, what we really have been looking for more in the past year are the pure cardioneuroablation patients. Those that are well-selected patients that, that Tolga and others have discussed in the yeah. session today that are well-selected based upon age, based upon phenotype, either discerned from uh, uh, an implantable loop recorder, a Holter monitor, or some wearable digital technology exactly. that documents a symptom rhythm correlation. Uh, I think we've become more uh, selective in terms of those that have a primary heart rate slowing phenotype, whether it's AV block or sinus rate slowing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because we believe at least that those are the patients that are most uh, acutely benefiting from this type yeah. of intervention. We both agree that Patient selection is the, the principal step and the, the, the decision um, if it's going to work or not. How are we going to do it? We still have to work on that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's time for a global initiative to put everybody together and do this uh, hard work to get more evidence and more results so finally we can get the evidence that is necessary to, to put the cardioneuroablations and the decision of the pacemaker in the guidelines. Any final comments? Uh, yeah. Uh, this year, in, on November 2 to 4, uh, we will have World Society of Arrhythmia meeting yeah. and in Istanbul. And we would like to see all electrophysiologists to learn uh, from a uh, different part of the world about arrhythmia and device treatment. Where is it going to be? So much. In Istanbul? Yeah, in Istanbul. The beginning of the humanity, right? Yes. So uh, it's going to be a good place to get everybody together. Thank you so much for Thank sharing you. some time with Global Voices. It was Thank great you so having much. you both here. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Don't forget to follow Global Voices and Heart Rhythm TV on YouTube channel and social media.
Stay safe, stay tuned, and I wish you all an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching.